Uh, designing for voice, usually about a four minute conversation. Today I have 10 minutes to talk about designing for voice, so we got plenty of time. Uh, my name's Mike Leibovitz. I work as the director of mobility for Extreme Networks. Uh, for those that aren't familiar with Extreme Networks, uh, we do a lot of great stuff in Wi Fi. Uh, Particularly uh, these days in the National Football League, we're actually the official Wi-Fi provider for the National Football League and the Wi-Fi analytics provider for the National Football League as well. Um, interestingly, for those that uh, want to know how many uh, Blackberries were at the Super Bowl just the other night, I can tell you that information. Anyone want to venture a guess? Just... Four. Four. One. I'm surprised. A few of you actually hit the number right on the head. So if I was in the building, there would have been five. <laughs> <laughs> I have a blog and a mobility webcast called On The Fly Wi-Fi. A few people in the room have been on episodes. Uh, Lee Badman, Keith Parsons, Devin Aiken, UC uh, Hamant uh, as well. Anyone that's interested, uh, please join episodes of On The Fly Wi-Fi. And if you'd like to participate, please come see me. So designing for voice. Um, again, pretty simple topic, I think. What's interesting to me most about voice is that, you know, voice is, is dead, right? Nobody likes talking to each other. Most people want to text, most people want a Facebook or any other sort of messaging. But what's really interesting is that there's an emergence, right? There's kind of a re-emergence of voice, particularly in 2015. And there's sort of a couple of reasons why there's a re-emergence of voice as I see it. Hopefully people are, uh, you know, talking to each other, maybe a little bit more friendly, but there's something that's happening, and, and I heard about it earlier today uh, in the, the public Wi-Fi conversation, and there's a market disruption. There's, there's something going on, right? Service providers kind of encroaching into the enterprise space, people trying to figure it out. There's a particular disruption, something really interesting where, you know, the service providers that have always bundled voice with a cellular package are being disrupted. People are coming along saying, hey, we can have a data only plan, and with that data only plan, well heck, we can do whatever we want on top of that. And what's interesting when you think about, you know, data only plan, well, you know, here's my take at a pretty uh, a wizardly mathematic equation, voice over X where X equals data, right? Today, the world of data has transformed so rapidly that everything that we do is in the form of data. Voice certainly is in the form of data, not as many people as we would hope quite understand voice over IP is voice over data, but voice over X where X is equals data. And essentially, every wireless LAN that we're designing today has to support real-time communication. And, and I think about real-time applications in terms of voice, in terms of video, you know, the drivers that we see today in many different places, you know, how many people, just to share hands, how many people in the hotel have used FaceTime to talk to your family, right? half the people. I mean, it's, we expect this thing to, to, to work. FaceTime, of course, is running voice and video at the same time. Real-time applications, if you're not designing for it today, uh, you're probably in big trouble, right? You're, you're, you're going to be in big trouble. So I put together uh, a couple of considerations in terms of what do we think about in terms of designing a network for real-time communication, in particular voice. Voice is one of those tricky things because when it doesn't work, it's pretty obvious that it's not working, right? Uh, someone earlier, I, I don't know if it was Blake, you know, can you hear me now? Don't ask me again, right? If, if it doesn't work, it's extremely obvious. If an email takes an extra second to get to your inbox, you have no idea. I think by and large, you know, more and more customers that I speak to, and, and I, I try not to be, you know, too smart as I give them the answer when they say, ask questions about the infrastructure, ask questions about the capability, and the return typically is tell me about the clients, tell me about the devices. What's interesting, and you know, we talk about channels and DFS support and all these things, you know, can it support 80 megahertz and 11 AC and what are all the capabilities? But when you think about voice, there's kind of an added layer of functionality. Some real interesting things happen when you take, you know, and albeit they're getting a little better, but you know, you take an Apple device and layer on some voice type application and take it into a healthcare organization, for example. Interesting things happen. And today you look at the types of certifications, you know, voice enterprise certifications that are coming along and Wi-Fi Alliance that are getting there. But by and large, the functionality that you're going to get is heavily dependent on the client type and the client's functionality without any question, you know, the certifications, the drivers, the power, you know, some people think about durability and size, but you know, short of the clients being capable and really the clients that you want to support, uh, it kind of falls apart and it falls apart 
uh, pretty quickly. I think uh, kind of my third bullet there, you know, take measurements with the device. It's probably the, the best recommendation. If you have an opportunity before someone in your purchasing department goes out and buys 1,500 devices, try to get one of them, right? Or even better, like vendors like ourselves, you know, send us a device or ask us if we've tested with a particular device. Understand the RX. Right? It's, it's important to understand the receive sensitivities of these devices, not just the transmit side of it. Uh, point number two, you know, coverage. Uh, 2.4 or 5 gigahertz, I say choose one. Hopefully, you know, you keep your voice devices on one of them. I'm not going to debate. I know Devin's going to get up here and tell everyone, you know, 2.4 is dead. Um, you know, choose one. Certainly, if you're going to put voice and voice communications, uh, clearly, you're not going to roam between, <laughs> between frequencies, but uh, choose one for your plan. Typically recommended target, right? We've always heard NEG 65, NEG 67. I think what's interesting now with 11AC designs, a lot of people are, are pushing that boundary you know, more and more, getting further and further down. So it's almost to the point, again, depending on how you look at these things, uh, where an 11AC deployment might actually give you enough coverage, enough signal strength in terms of doing a, a pretty good voice deployment, again, depending on, on your uh, requirements. Uh, environmental elements, I think we, we all know, you know, SNR, retries. I think one uh, big thing and probably a lesson that we learned uh, pretty good in the stadium market is being able to match the AP and client, the transmit power, right? So the asymmetric, uh, um, the asymmetric transfers that you see, which again, in a voice, uh, in a voice world can do some nasty things particularly when you start thinking about roaming, right? And, and when someone is going to choose to roam or when a device is gonna to choose to roam. So points number three and number four, I probably should have animated these slides a little bit, but I was hoping to put some good stuff out there for you guys. Uh, interference certainly is uh, probably the third element of consideration. Uh, channel reuse and cell dimensioning is probably the key factor in terms of uh, interference. I uh, fully agree uh, with Chuck's point earlier, 20 megahertz for high density uh, designs. I think 20 megahertz in every wireless network uh, probably will take you the furthest uh, that you're going to need to go. Static channel assignment, uh, probably early on in the early you know, markets that were using voice over wireless land, healthcare, uh, probably were the ones that were really clear about static channel assignment and being very prescriptive in terms of how you're uh, implementing your channel. So certainly you wanna go with that. And uh, you know, more power doesn't equal better Wi-Fi. Maybe it's a tattoo that somebody wants to, to get and tweet, tweet that out uh, at some point. Roaming, uh, there's no question, right? We need to consider uh, roaming factors. All of a sudden, you know, everyone on the wired side, and I love having these uh, debates with people in my company that build our wired products. There's something that's really strange that happens when a device is on one AP and moves to another. It's not like unplugging a cable and plugging it back into another switch. Uh, there's a lot of things that have to happen to make it work. So the type of security that you're using, PSK, you know, WPA, uh, WPA2, hopefully, Enterprise. If you have 11R, 11K, you know, does the infrastructure support it? Do the devices support it? Typically, you're targeting below 50 milliseconds, hopefully better than that in terms of being able to roam. Of course, and uh, the first bullet I guess I kind of missed was uh, channels in use, right? It's, a, it's kind of a funny thing because we want to use more channels for density, but unfortunately for roaming, the more channels, the more scanning. So there's kind of a decision point that has to be made there. And of course, consider that wired network. F number five, uh, the last design consideration is this uh, kind of silly thing that we sometimes uh, overlook, which is quality of service. And, um, you know, quality of service is a tricky thing. Certainly over the air uh, is a tricky thing. You know, you start talking about contention medium and all the rest of it. But, you know, I, th I think one of the biggest tricks is if the device and, and or the application can actually mark traffic. And if it can't, if it can't, how are you going to classify that traffic as it's getting to the AP? And certainly considering the wired side of your infrastructure uh, is, is pretty important. I always say, you know, consider the signaling and the encoding, right? Two different aspects in terms of uh, setting up a voice call and actually making a voice call work. Got to consider both, certainly from a QoS perspective. And again, that end-to-end -end quality of service is, uh, is pretty key, right? At both the wireless and the wired QoS and how you're going to mark and transition those over. OKC, uh, it's a great thing if uh, you don't have 11R and 11K uh, available for you, probably 11R more so than the K not available. So, did I animate? Nope. So voice is dead. <laughs> Long live voice. Thank you very much. <laughs>